Hello everybody, it is Toby here, back for another episode of Minecraft, The Lord of the Rings, and we are wearing our linden gear with our, I think those were, uh, Angmar leggings, and let's just put that back on, we are in the right skin, because I just recorded the intro to this in the wrong skin, by accident, but we are here, starting things off back in Minecraft, The Lord of the Rings, over hill, and today we are going to be venturing, trying to get at least back to North Mithlund, uh, so next episode we can venture back into the Shire and go out through the old forest and the Barrow Downs to meet up in Breland. But I decided that instead of doing the whole long road thing, we're just going to cut south and see if we can cut off this entire corner. Bit of cross country for today's episode. That should be a little more entertaining than following the road anyway. Might encounter some interesting things that we wouldn't have seen prior to this on the road. We've already got a house here to raid. And today, oh, this was the day I will be answering questions from you guys. And we did have a question, and it was, um, what is my favourite horror film? Uh, like my hor if I watch the horror genre, and if, uh, what is my favourite type of horror? Which, which was a good question, like, good job to the person who asked that. And my take on the horror genre is I don't, I don't watch it. A lot. I really rarely watch it if I do watch it, which really isn't often at all. But it doesn't really affect me. I'm not really one for getting scared by that sort of thing because it's pretty obvious to tell when the jump scares are coming, when various different scary bits are coming, and it doesn't really scare me too much because I look at films and stuff knowing it's a film when I go in there for the enjoyment, except with Lord of the Rings and Star Wars where I get really immersed into the whole universe of it, but if films I'm just watching one off, I watch it as if they were a film rather than if it was like they were real. But watching that, uh, watching various horror films, they don't really have too much of an effect on me, so uh, the horror genre isn't a genre that I watch particularly often. I will only really watch it if someone invites me to come and watch some with them. But as for the ones that I've watched and the ones that are sort of my favourite, um, I recently saw the brand new It in cinemas. That was that was quite good. I enjoyed that. Uh, I've seen a couple of the Saw films. Uh, I didn't really pay too much attention to it when I was watching it. It seemed cool enough with all the gruesome things like uh, whatever happened in that film. And yeah, I haven't really seen too much of the horror genre. So yeah, it's not a genre that I'm particularly familiar with, and the films that I have watched, I've enjoyed them, but they're no, by far nowhere near my favourite films. Uh, my favourite film franchise, it's it's tied between Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, and they're each for different reasons. Star Wars gives me a huge, huge enjoyment factor, and I can get really in-depth into the universe, even though it, does, it doesn't seem as real as, say, the Lord of the Rings does. The Lord of the Rings seems very very real to me as if it is a place that could happen and I get very very into the stories and such of Lord of the Rings and get very intertwined with the characters and I really really do have a love for Lord of the Rings which is different to the love I have for Star Wars. Star Wars I have, I, I it's similar, I get in with the lore and stuff and the characters but it's a completely different feeling, I'm not entirely sure how to describe it but from a creative standpoint, I love the architecture and uh, costumes and the weapons and the buildings and the world of Lord of the Rings far more than I do Star Wars, but I much prefer... Well, I don't prefer, I, I get more involved with the storylines and character arcs of the Star Wars characters. And whereas I look at Lord of the Rings, I do get involved with the character arcs no less than I do with Star Wars. But I take far more of a notice of the architecture, of the design of various different things in the Lord of the Rings. So, for instance, looking at dwarven architecture, looking at the different types of costumes that the film uses particular. Getting replicas is something I really want to do, because the Lord of the Rings architecture is something that I really, really like. And that's why I like this mod a lot, because it captures... In a Minecraft sense, the world very well, and there isn't quite a Star Wars mod that ca captures what I like about Star Wars. I mean, there are a couple Star Wars mods out there, but they're pretty pants, to be honest. But this one, this Lord of the Rings mod, is just incredible for what it captures. It feels like Minecraft, but it feels like Lord of the Rings, which is just how I like it. Because those are 
two of my favourite things combined. Lord, Lord of the Rings and Minecraft. I love Minecraft. I absolutely adore it. I'm working on building a city at the moment. And it's very creatively named Horsford because I'm from Oxfordshire. And rather than Ox is crossing a river, Oxford, it, I found I, I found a plains poem that had an absolute ton of horses in a river. So I was like, you know what, why not call it Horsford? But anyway, that I, w I will probably make a video on this city at some point. It's just going through a, a transition because we do. I build it on a server. I build it on the creative server that I play on. But that is uh, being taken down, so we're transitioning it over to another creative server. So we will be doing that. I think these towers are only really worth going into the bottom floor. But yeah, there will be definitely a small series on this city. Uh, probably just going to be called Let's Build a City with Toby or something. Something along those lines where you guys can see more of my building aspect of Minecraft. And stuff like that. And I, by no means, let me just warn you now, the city is not any sort of historical accuracy. It's just me building what I'd like to build in a way that I want to build it. And that is sort of more of a disclaimer for people who like to rant about when things aren't making sense when they aren't like structurally stable so it's going well ish we just gotta keep heading south and make it back to the road in due course there's a river here i didn't i don't have a boat on me do i uh, it doesn't look like i have a bed though so i can sleep just a normal straw bed that i got from the shire it does come with me in my backpack all this way there we go but yeah i mean Actually, let's have a look at the statistics of this world. So I've only, apparently I've only quit this once, which is not true. But I've played a total of nine hours, and that, that kind of makes sense, because I've played nine episodes. Makes sense. Whoa, disk space remains for record. I'm looking at my recording now, and it says I can record 1,086 hours of audio in just a straight line. <laughs> so... That's quite good, but I've only died once. I've killed 140 mobs. I've just killed eight cows. It doesn't have the modded mobs, of course. But yeah, it's kind of cool. Just to look at that. Distance by horse, a kilometer. Distance walked. I've gone 65 kilometers so far in Lord of the Rings. That's 65,000 blocks. That's incredible. But anyway, are there a fish? That's in a new addition since my old season it's kind of cool i like the fish see minecraft needs to just have fish like that because we have the f yeah that's cool i like that that is a very good addition well done mob create mod creator this white sand's cool as well but yeah we just got a little bit of a run we're not going to be encountering too much new in the next couple episodes as we venture back retrace our steps but i mean i said i wouldn't cut anything out so i'm just going to keep going because if I was to be uh, a wanderer and you were to follow me in my story, this would all be part retracing my steps, going back to lands I've been before, but treading in a new route. That is a thing that happens. So yeah, that was really the only question about the horror films that I got on that episode. I mean, I can just double check quickly on my phone if I did get any more questions from that. Just double check. We did not so uh, people keep asking if i want to play on multiplayer servers and stuff like that um but yeah i don't really yeah there doesn't seem to be too many more questions yeah there, there's not there's not many more questions people just keep asking me would you like to join this multiplayer lord of the ring server would you like to join this multiplayer lord of the ring server and i think for now i'm going to keep this a single player series uh because something about lord of the rings having it single player for me is just the way i like to play it because i i get that people could help with the lore but the lore i like to play is when there's me being controlled of me and everything everything else is ai but it, it's them they don't really have personalities ish they do they're programmed in a way to make them seem like it but i'm controlling myself i like to wander i'd like to think that out in the world there's other people wandering but i don't particularly want to come across them like if i was playing multiplayer there'll be people doing lots of different things but wow we are quite high up 
this whole cross country thing may be a bit difficult, but like encountering elves and stuff in the forest like this, just sort of stood around, wandering around, is better than encountering a player which may or may not kill me. And the way I like to be approached is by bandits on a rare occurrence or like an attack launched by Urukai or something in the la in the Lone Lands or wherever, rather than have a random guy fully kitted out in Mithril, which is just hard to get in Lord of the Rings terms anyway. But fully kitted out in Mithril with like Sauron's mace or something, just one shotting me out of the park over and over again and not letting me do anything. That isn't how I like to play the game. So, if that's basically my excuse for hitting, not hitting multiplayer, not doing multiplayer. But something I do want to talk about and is in large part thanks to this series. I have hit 200 subscribers on the channel. I have hit. 200 subscribers in the last week. I, I went from like 170 like three weeks ago to 200 and that is incredible to see that happen. I mean I've gained like nine subscribers this month. It's, like, I've gained loads. I've been... it's great. This series has definitely helped that and most definitely in large part thanks to this series because a lot of people seem to really really like this series. So, I mean, thank you a hell of a lot to everyone who watches this series and everyone who has shared my videos, subscribed, liked, commented, just even given me a simple view. If you have ever done any of that, thank you so much for watching these videos. And I'm going to put a poll in this video. I'm going to put a poll in the top right corner and I'm going to ask you whether you came to my channel because of Lord of the Rings SMPDX tutorials. So, or other. And that's what I'm going to have the poll as. So you guys can vote on the poll. And if you came to my channel, uh, found my channel through Lord of the Rings, watching Lord of the Rings videos. If you subscribe to my channel from watching SMPDX. If you subscribe to my channel from tutorials. Or if you subscribe to my channel from some of my in real life stuff, which I haven't done too much of. And I'd be very surprised if you had. And just please uh, fill out the poll so I can get an idea of why people watch, where people came from from the channel and comment down below uh, with also what you uh, subscribe because of and if you watch any of my other series apart from this one, if you watch my SMPDX stuff, if you watch my tutorials, if you watch some of my in real life stuff I've done or if you just solely stick to Lord of the Rings anything's fine as long as you're watching my videos and enjoying them but I highly recommend you do check out some of my other series because it's very different me in a lot of my other series. You get a different perspective on how I like to play the game of Minecraft. Tutorialing, it's about me uh, telling you guys how I build and how I think you guys should approach building. I mean, I'm no by no means any sort of expert like Madness64 or anything, but I do know a, a fair little bit about building because I've hang out with Fluff a lot. And I do... I like to think I'm a good builder. But I'm probably not in comparison to a lot of people. But it's one of those things that you get to see. And then when it's SMPDX, it's about me completing projects, making lots of progress, and ultimately hanging out with friends and playing on a server in a relaxed community where I don't work to complete um, a project every single week, every single day. I don't work on SMPDX. It's just a place where I can go. If I'm feeling like, you know what, I'm feeling a little bit of productivity today and I just go and I build or I dig or I explore. And if I'm with talking to some people and go on SMPDX, you might see a video out of it because SMPDX is not really for me. It's not really make, for making videos for me. It's for I having fun idea. rather than this series is solely for the purpose of making videos where I sit down and I talk to a camera and I just play Lord of the Rings because... To be completely honest, I wouldn't be playing this mod if it wasn't for videos. And that's not me saying I don't like the mod. It's just I couldn't, I couldn't sit here in silence for an hour playing the mod. But when I'm sat here talking whilst exploring, it distracts me from what's actually going on in game. And I talk about what is on my mind. And that is a very, very, very nice thing to do. And it's perfect to play this game with it because you never know what might happen. Never know if a bandit's going to attack you, or a merchant's going to sell you something for a great deal, or if you're going to find a house, or if you're going to find a ruin, or if you're just going to find a river with a big hill behind it that you really don't want to climb because hills are a pain, 
There's always something new in this mod that you can come across. And of course, there are some parts that are going to be repetitive. Of course, that's the same with any series. There's always going to be repetition. And that's the same with anything on YouTube. You can never find something completely new on YouTube because someone's going to have already done it because YouTube is very saturated. It just, if you like to rewatch repeating sort of things with a different personality, that is obviously the way to do YouTube. I just do similar things to other YouTubers who've done it before, but I do have my own twist on it. SMPDX, a lot of people say it's very similar to the Hermitcraft series, which I agree it is, but that's not saying that we are copying Hermitcraft, because there's only so much you can do with a survival multiplayer series before you get accused of copying someone else's multiplayer series. That is my take on it. We don't copy them. We... We all watch them, I know. A lot of us watch the Hermitcraft series because it's hugely entertaining. But don't let that mean that you think because just because we watched it, we're copying them. No, we have our own ideas and we do it in our own way as best we can. But of course, it's going to come across like we're doing the same thing as them because there's only so much you can do with Minecraft. There's only so many features. There's only so many farms. There's only so many builds you can do. And... Of course, not every build's going to be the same, but if you even do anything remotely similar to another YouTuber who's bigger than you, people automatically accuse the smaller YouTuber, oh, hey, you've copied this person, or oh, hey, you've copied this person. I just think, you know what, I don't really care if in the future people see my videos when I'm hopefully bigger and smaller YouTubers completely copy me, as long as they don't re-upload my video, as long as they do a series like this, like Lord of the Rings, and it's them talking their personality. That's different. That's them. They're not copying me. I'm not going to get mad. And neither should my viewers get mad. And that's what I see a lot is people... People think that as SMPDX we are similar to Hermitcraft. Or people think... Like just because I'm a British person playing on a survival multiplayer. I'm either Exumavoid or Mumbo Jumbo. Just because of that. And, I mean, where it's a fair point, I watch both of them every single video they make, near enough. That doesn't mean that is who I'm trying to be on YouTube. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be anyone but myself on YouTube. And myself is a British guy who has a purple top hat, which you guys have not seen yet, but I do wear it when making videos. I, do, I wear it all the time, why not? It's a purple top hat. If you want to see a video of me wearing my purple top hat say it and I'll, I'll record a video solely based around the purple top hat and i will wear it in future real life videos i do because why not it's a purple top hat who wouldn't but yeah i bought this purple top hat at a festival and it was it's just it was great but that's the thing is there's a lot more to me than minecraft and lord of the rings i listen to music a lot when i'm playing games i listen to a lot of different types of music my music taste is such a jamble of many different tastes. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely crazy. People ask, oh, what sort of music are you into? And I just sort of go, everything. Everything at all. <laughs> and here enough, it, if it sounds cool, I'll put it in my music playlist. And speaking of my music playlist, I do have a music playlist full of a thousand and sixty something songs that I listen to every single night when playing Minecraft or every single night when talking to someone. Or just doing homework or whatever. And that is a public playlist that I have on my channel. So you can find that in the playlist tab. It's my music playlists. Uh, warning that uh, some of the songs aren't obviously family friendly. And a lot of the songs are very different. But uh, some examples of what songs and what sort of people I have in that playlist. I have anything from the entirety of The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, The Star Wars, The Harry Potter... All of their soundtracks and Pirates of the Caribbean, all of all of those film franchises, all of their soundtracks in this playlist. So that accounts for quite a few songs because they are some of my favorite franchises and I love the music in them. So they're all in there. I've got a couple Lion King songs in there, a couple Disney songs, various things like that. I've got some metal, some pirate metal in the form of Ailstorm, some Dragon Force, some German stuff probably from nano actually no that was no the german thing was from fluff but nano nano nano's music also inspires me quite a bit i have quirky's music like actual music quirky has made i've got all of his songs in my playlist 
Uh, there's a link to Quirky in my SMPDX description, also on my channel page. He does music. Like, it's quite neat. It's pretty neat. I like it. Um, I have various YouTube re YouTuber remixes, like Cup of Tea by Ellie Beatmaker of Exumavoid, Sugarcane Pillar, Sugarcane Brick Wall by Mumbo on Ellie Beatmaker, stuff like that. I have oh never i just I have meme songs as well. I have uh, lots of random meme songs like uh, Rick Astley, Never Gonna Give You Up, that one, Rick Rolling. That's fun. That always comes up in my playlist. I got uh, various songs in there. Got a little bit of Ed Sheeran in there as well. That obviously came with the Hobbit soundtrack, Icy Fire. Uh, that's a good song. I could play that on the guitar. I've got other songs that Fluff has just sort of linked me, and I'm like, hey, that's cool. And of course, the big one, Vinsvept, and Irang, and Iziok, or Izoku, or however you say his name. Uh, all of these people I have in my playlist. Vinsvept is amazing, and that's Rain. Of course it's Rain. It's Lord of the Rings. Why wouldn't it be Rain? But Vinsvept is incredible. I use his music in a lot of my uh, videos, because he is a great, great creator who allows the use of his songs in videos with credibility so I always credit him uh, and I use his music a lot and I really do like it um, as well as Orang. Orang is the person who allowed me to use that song as my intro song for this series uh, the intro song to this series is by Orang and it is incredible it is called Where Gold Stars Will Glow that uh, Orang's always linked in the description of the Lord of the Rings videos and, yeah, he does a lot of other music as well. He does Dungeon Synth is his main thing. Lord Leviticus is amazing as well. I uh, listen to his music quite a bit. And Izoku, who is also amazing. I enjoy his music as well. I don't use it in videos too much. But, yeah, I, I do like a lot of music. I've got a lot of 8-bit remixes as well in there. I've got loads in this playlist, so if you if you like music and if you're a fan of music, just go and have a look in my playlist and just sort of scroll through it and see what you can find. I add random songs into it. If you think there's a song that you if there's a song that you particularly like, uh, type its name in the comments and I'll check it out and I'll have a look at it. But uh, chances are Fluff might have already linked it to me because Fluff links me a hell of a lot of music. Oh, we're almost at the road. That is good. But no, Fluff links me a hell of a lot of music, so there's a house over here. There's two houses. So I do listen to a lot of my music through Fluff. And a lot of it is like metal and stuff, which I like. I like metal. Metal is probably my favourite of the genres, but I do enjoy listening to Lord of the Rings a fair bit. So Linden boots, just normal boots. What do you have in your pants? Lasting tough Linden leggings. Plus one protection. Plus one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having those. You can have my Angmar legs. I'm now back into full Linden gear. Anything for me to. Ooh! A letter from Elrond to Gilgalad. Do we, don't we already have that? Let's see if it stacks. Yeah, we've already got that one, so. Another interesting thing to find, but not something. We need to reread because we've read that in a previous episode. I started to think that we are coming across quite a few of the same books. We've got another gold ring. I'll come and do that. We've got a sword. Just normal linden sword. Pretty standard. Silver ring. Another linden sword. Oh, that's a linden dagger. We don't really want a dagger. Daggers aren't great. Up here you have more lembus bread. We're collecting up all the lembus. Some silver coins and a long spear. But we don't take things. Long spears. God, we must have so many coins by now. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got a quest. Four oak saplings. I can do that. Do we have any? None yet, but I know exactly where we can get some oak saplings. Hold on right there. We're doing a quest, guys. Could you believe it? We're doing a quest. We're doing a quest for the elves. All right, we'll leave that to decay. So we get four saplings out of that tree alone. We'll put that in our ba uh, big backpack. Because why not? We need some. I don't actually see another oak tree around for a while. So let's hope we get saplings from this. If not, I'm going to be fairly, fairly annoyed. But, oh, we got we got at least one. So that's good. Okay. 
Got one sapling from this tree so far. Give us more. Yep, two. Alright, we need two more saplings and then we can get some coins from this elf. Come on. Come on. Okay, so we need to get another oak tree. See if we can see one anywhere. There's one. It's two actually. Ooh, I thought that was a hole, but it's not. Right. There we go. I'll go chop down the other one so we get a better chance at getting saplings. And I mean, collecting wood's a good thing. Wood's quite useful. If we ever find ourselves in a situation where we need wood, we know where to come. But wow, this rain isn't pleasant. It's a thunderstorm. It's a thunderstorm, not a thunder battle. But you know what? We're just going to sleep through it. Get rid of that thunder. Hopefully get rid of the rain as well. Is it going to clear up? No, so we'll try again. Okay, well, apparently we can just sleep infinitely. That doesn't make the thunderstorm go away. Well, that's sad. Alright, three and four. We got four. Let's leave. And wow, this thunder is not pleasant. Ah. Oh. Right, well, at least we can complete a quest. That is a good thing. There we go, plus ten. There we go, we got loads of coins for that, nice. Right, let's keep heading south. It was, yes. Yes, we keep heading south. We're actually almost... Almost at the road again, which is a nice thing to think. Even though it's thunderstorming and raining. Doesn't stop our spirits being high, does it? That is great. So, let's head up here. Hello, Mr. Elf. God, this rain is really unpleasant. Oh, and the thunder is terrifying. There must be a thunder battle going on in the Misty Mountains or something. Actually, it'll probably be in the Blue Mountains, as they're the nearest mountains to here. In fact, yeah, we're literally just under the Blue Mountains, so... I hope that the thunder battle isn't causing too much injury to any people. But, hey, we got another house. Hello, it's thundering, I'm scared, let me in. Blasting, oh an arrow, we need that. Just collecting on that, should we just use this person's bed and see if this does anything? Maybe an elven bed does magic. Magic elven bed? Probably not. More lembus, I will please. Uh, nothing else, just more arrows. Yeah, it doesn't look like sleeping does anything to the thunderstorm, so it doesn't matter. We'll just keep going. We'll power through. That struck right there. Okay. Maybe the thunderstorm is a little more... Let's hope I don't get stabbed by lightning. Let's hope I actually make it out of here alive. I don't want to die. I'm too young to die. I'm just a traveller. Look at me. Oh. It's terrifying times. God, oh, it is terrifying. You have no idea how terrifying it is to have lightning strike next to you. Some boots. There you go. Cooling, tough. What do we have? Plus two. Ah, plus four against fallings. Probably useful. God. Oh. How do these elves stay dry, by the way? Just not a whole lot. They don't have really many walls on these houses. That was another lightning strike that happened. Oh, God, this is a violent thunderstorm. Okay. Is the thunder and lightning gone? Are we safe? Nope. Run away. Scary lightning and thunder. 
God. Terrifying. Don't really want to be in here. Okay, so keep going south. We are very almost to the road, and then we just... <sighs> okay. When we get to the road, we've got to head east. Okay, it looks lighter now, so maybe the thunderstorm's passed. I hope that's the case anyway. Because that was terrifying. Gah. Okay. Wow. It's definitely a lot quieter now. Most definitely a lot quieter. Without thunder and lightning and everything frightening striking down around us and almost striking us itself. Oh, that would have been terrifying if we had got struck by lightning. <laughs> Set fire, died. It, oh, it would have just been absolutely mortifying for that to happen. Considering I've only died once. Which, yeah. What can I say? God, I'm scared. Where is this road? Okay, we, we should be on top of the road any minute now. Any minute now. There we are. Okay, we gotta go east. Head back east all the way over to North Midland. Being back on the road feels quite nice. I feel safer. Being back on a road rather than a cross country being struck by lightning. God, that was a, that was terrifying. That. But you know what? It's slightly terrifying in itself. Having lightning rain down ar around you. Is... Ooh, I need to catch my breath a little bit. Right. Well, we have made it back to the road. There are some there are some horses there. And yeah, it's it's a lot calmer now the lightning's gone. Um Yeah, there's Still rain. Oh, there's an orchard. Ooh. Didn't know elves had orchards. It's rather nice. All in ordered rows. Apple trees, pear trees. That seems to be about it. Apple and pears. But yeah. Hopefully, uh, we're about halfway through the episode here and we've made it from there down to here. So if we try and make it to North Mithlon by the end of the episode. That would be quite good. And then next episode we'll be making it back to the Shire across Ariador, which is oh, Ariador's fun to cross. So that would be good to do. Oh. Oh. How tranquil. I'm going to take a screenshot of that. There we go. Oh. Oh, it's, it's much nicer now the rain's gone. A little quiet, but much nicer. God, I hate rain, and it always happens when we're recording. Hey, there's a house. We'll go, we'll go and have a look. Let's go and have a look at this. Over here. Hello, hello. We have an arrow. What's it over here? We're hanging some of this stuff. It's pretty blue, shiny stuff. Should forget its name. Ooh, the white trees. Ooh, okay. We got a book to read. Tell Perion the elder tree that shone upon the way. Oh no, we've done this. We have one, have we? Let's see if it stacks. Yes, we've done that one. Of course we have. How did I forget? 
Of course we've done that wrong. <laughs> My bad, we've done that book. How many... What's in our memento pouch at the moment? That's equipment. Mementos. Okay. Yeah, we got three of the Rangers Guide Volume 3. Two white trees, two letters from Elrond to Gilgalad. <laughs> the, <laughs> the I don't dagger. <laughs> the I don't dagger. <laughs> and lots of, lots of books. Two riddles. Uh, we got six gold rings and four silver rings. <laughs> the Idon Dagger is is the best memento. <laughs> that is brilliant. I love the Idon Dagger. <laughs> so what are our alignments looking at? Blue Mountains love us. The Rangers love us. The Hobbits love us even more. Gundabad hate us. And everything else is neutral. So at the minute... We are looking friendly with everyone but Gundabad, which is good because we hate Gundabad because they're orcs. And we don't like orcs because they're disgusting creatures who always try and kill us. Which, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it's, but it's a bad thing that orcs try and kill us all the time. It's not a good thing. Well. Let's just take a minute. Sit in silence and take in the steps of my character in the silence. And my dog barking in the background, apparently. That's also not good. Alright, I've given up with making silence happen. I was just trying to be tranquil, but no. The dog's barking. Woof, 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 woof. How unimmersive is that? Oh, hello, let's, let's, this is Malos. This is El Delote. It's got an umlaut, they're cool. Malbone. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Yeah, we are actually a pro. Oh, we got a elven smithy. We can get some resources. That is good. And all oh, my dogs are barking in the background. Oh gosh, it's it's shambles. They're all yapping, yapping, barking, barking, making noise. But yeah, how far have we actually gotten? Yeah, we're not going to make it to North Mithlond in this episode. It's it's yeah, it's not happening. But what we can do is get some tin. Some coal, some elven steel, some coal. So, do you reckon I can reforge some stuff? Valuables pouch. Should take some of this. Let's try and reforge our helmet because it's the worst of our stuff. Reforge cost four. So we need coins. I guess it's not working. So we'll put our stuff back. That's not any sort of fun. But anyway, why not just keep going? Keep going into the west, east, not into the west, into the east. Keep going. Let's keep going. Oh god, that scared the life out of me, that squawk. Well. Well, well, well indeed. That squawk, what do you make the squawk? Ooh. That ravine looks menacing, to say the least. But hey, we've got quite a ways to go, to be honest. I mean, we could try our best and go, let's do a water. Let's do, let's do a bit of a water venture. That sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? I think that sounds like a very good idea. Gives some variety to us just running on a road. But it is an old boat. It's an old boat. Aww. 
Old boat types, I forgot about these things with new Minecraft, but if we just go down to the water's edge into the sea and go up to South Mithlond. And we can ride the waters. Not these waters, that's just a little lake, but ride the waters of the sea all the way up to South Mithlond, all the way crossing the lands back into the eastern shore. Southern Shore. Eastern Shore? Eastern Shore. Eastern Shore. Back on the Eastern Shore. And sail back to the Shire Lands from whence we came. Even though we'd have to walk for quite a while because the Shire is in the middle of nowhere. In, no, not in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of the land with no sea. Connecting it to anything. Which is probably why it remained so undiscovered for so long by the enemy. Because they didn't have, really have any need to come over to Linden. Or... Any need to go into Ryador. They only had a need to kill Gondor. But, whoa, that's a... Um... That's a weird... Weird river bank. It almost looks like the MM Wheel. Fish. Just hear lava. This doesn't seem awfully safe to me, these river banks. Don't want clovers either. But anyway, we have found a place to launch our boat. Which I put on the shore. Found a place to... To the sea. Ooh. Haven't got that achievement before. But let's sail eastwards. And see what we can find. It's a sea. I don't like seagulls. But yeah, gonna have to get used to the new boats. Oh, there's a ruin. Okay, I guess we'll take a stop off. That doesn't look very natural. We'll take a stop off at the ruin. Looks kind of interesting. My boat. Oh, it's all the way over there. Well, that's not used. That's a hole. Right, let's make a hole in the wall. There's absolutely nothing here. Okay, so ruins are a waste of time. My boat's gone to the opposite end of this sea. Because it's an old boat and they do that. Well, let's go. Let's go, go, go eastwards. Eastwards along the ocean. And make it all the way back to South Mithlod. Because why not? Is it South Mithlod or South Mithlond? South Mithlond is where we want to make. And we've got a very, very long journey to do so. So this is probably where you'll rejoin us next episode is when we finally finish sailing. But even still, we should probably go out to see a little more. Look at us in our boat. The old Minecraft boats, eh? The old Minecraft boats are very, very strange. Oh wow, there's a big headland to get around. In theory though, we could just go straight over... Well, actually, there's blue mountains on either side of the river. Well, of the sea. Which is interesting, to say the least. Oh, wow, that's a lot of white sand. That is a lot of white sand, gosh. Very interesting. Well, I don't really know what to say. I've run out. This is the first time I've run out of things to talk about in a Lord of the Rings episode. 
I mean, there's not much going on apart from squids and boats. But we've got to make this trek somehow. So, I guess, yeah, we're just going to keep trekking. Just going to keep trekking. Just going to keep trekking. And I'm just going to keep saying we're just going to keep trekking. Because we're in the Gulf of Loon, and actually, it's in the, the Gulf of Loon. The Gulf of Loon. Now, remember last episode, we got invaded by a loon. Because we were using the wrong texture pack. And now we are sailing the Gulf of Loon. I think that slowly, loons are invading every single walk of Minecraft that any SMPDXer chooses to do. And I blame no one but the lunatic himself, the loon overlord, the spreader of loons from the realm of the loon. The Gulf of Loon is where I'm sailing. And I will get ambushed at some point, probably, by an army bred for one purpose to invade the world with loons and cover all the lands with darkness, with white spots. I have been Toby, and thank you for watching this episode of Minecraft The Lord of the Rings.